So first thing I really believe uh, is a need of a complete and single version of data for analysis and reporting. By aggregating, analyzing, and correlating this petabytes and terabytes of internally and externally generated data in a single platform basically can enable us solve some of the toughest problems around money laundering. So the diagram basically shows our version of what is commonly known as data river architecture. So you have a bunch of disparate systems on the left that goes through the event publishing layer, which basically standardizes each events according to the core data model, right? So you could have different transaction systems and each can have a different definition for the transaction event. So we generally have a common global event publisher layer, which basically transform and standardize these transactions uh, as per the common data model that we have. And all these events get published to our delivery layer, which is Kafka. And then you have on top the event processor, which basically does the data preparation thing. Right? So these could be apps which are built on Spark Streaming, Kafka Streams, or Flink which basically enriches the events and together with uh, the rule-based approach and machine learning uh, flags any suspicious transactions. So these events, as we see at the bottom, also goes to the historical lake or for historical analysis. So you have a bunch of batch processor and SQL on Hadoop kind of capabilities there. Uh, the suspicious events once generated into Kafka also gets picked up by the case managers. Um, for clarity sake, I haven't shown it in the picture here, but the case manager is where the case gets assigned to an investigator and there is a whole workflow where investigation uh, takes place. Right, so now we need to have, uh, for this investigation and analysis, we do need to have different needs and hence the requirement for different data engines which are shown in serving layer. Right? So event goes to a NoSQL database for faster key value lookups. So especially for machine learning algorithms that might need uh, customers last six months of transaction history with just a key value kind of a lookup, we do use a lot of NoSQL databases for it. It also gets into a graph engine for link analysis or network analysis, right? So if you have typically in anti-money laundering, you need to find out any cyclic paths, right? Uh, so that's where the graph engine helps us as well. So here Druid plays a very important role by enabling what we already discussed, that is OLAP mining, reporting, and dashboarding along with ad hoc analysis, which is done by the investigators. But it also serves as the low latency backend of our investigation UI, right? So when the case gets assigned to an investigator, it basically leverages this investigation UI in order to you know, look at that transaction from a 360 degree view. And that's where Druid uh, comes handy as well. So in the next slide, basically, like what we have discussed about the whole AML process. It's just putting pieces together, which piece of this architecture basically serves which piece of uh, the whole process. Right? So if you really see Kafka is where Kafka and the event publishers are where we collect the data. And the event processor, which is basically our CEP engines, are the one where we in real time do the data preparation and with series of rule-based and machine learning kind of model, do the transaction monitoring and anomaly detection as well. Right? The serving layer and the system of intelligence together basically help us do not only the transaction monitoring and anomaly detection, but also like we discussed the investigation and finally the reporting as well. Uh, of these anomalies to the regulators and, and to the executives.